Okay, put your hand up if you have found a series on Netflix or a podcast series that's new to you and you have literally watched in a short space of time, one or two days, every single episode in that series. I've done it. You've probably done it if you've got Netflix or anything resembling it. So let's not pretend you haven't. And now let's take that human habit and apply it to why we bother doing stuff like this video. My name is Chris Hargraves. This is Digital Marketing Mastery for Lawyers. And you can find me and my various other pieces of content at noonelikedandtrusted.com.au. And we are talking about the binge effect. Why do we build these assets that we are building? Why do we go to the trouble of producing videos, of putting them on YouTube, of writing articles, of creating this bank of information that is available to people? A lot of people are concerned with the individual metrics. And I spoke about video metrics recently. I'm now going to talk about the idea of the global metric. Okay, so... How does this work? I'll give you another example, a non-Netflix example for the readers. Perhaps you find a book by an author and it turns out you really, really enjoyed that book and you enjoyed what the author had to say and you find that that author has written four other books. Are you not more likely now to go and get another book by that author? Now, you may or may not enjoy that quite as much. It might be on a slightly different topic or it might be less well written or whatever. But you are more likely, are you not, to go and buy a book by that author again because you found the one that you really enjoyed. And if you find the second one and it's awesome, you're probably going to get the third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh ones as well. At least a decent number until you run out of money or ability to read things or the stack of unread books on your bedside table gets too high, as it generally does. So... How can we apply that here? We're doing this so that, A, yes, we have an immediate regular presence on social media, on various other places, for our email newsletter lists, for YouTube search possibilities, for blog search possibilities. That is one reason we're doing it. The immediate impact of the individual article might be significant enough to tip the balance for someone to call us and make an inquiry and do good things for our budgets and our revenue and our finances and give us an opportunity to turn a warm lead into a client. Okay, that is yes. Reason one, pretty big reason and it's important, but we're also doing this in this way. We're producing content that people can find and that is in a big long list of other content that people can also find so that if people find one piece of our content, they actually find 100 pieces of our content and this is the binge effect. And I'm sure you've done it on YouTube where you've gone and you've watched something and then you've watched something else by that person and another one and another one and another one. And before you know it, you've sat there and you've actually watched 22 episodes of someone doing blacksmithing or something like that when what you had intended to find was how to sharpen a knife. This is the binge effect at work. If someone is looking for something and you are producing material that is relevant to your audience, then this is the what they're going to find and hopefully consume an enormous amount of in the time they have available. That is why we produce more content. That is why we answer questions that are relevant to people. That is why we don't necessarily slow down in the content production. Because if we look like we are consistent, if we look like we are regularly producing things, if we look like we are relevant, if we look like we are informed and expert and friendly and approachable and all of those things, then the more people see of that, each of those elements, the more likely they are to go, you know what, I think this person's probably the person for me or the person I'm going to refer X to or I've seen this person around. So next time I'm asked, I'll go, hey, why don't you call Chris from No One Like and Trusted? He seems pretty awesome and he does lots of videos. P.S. Go and binge watch all my videos. It'll do great things for my YouTube statistics. But if you're not doing that, then what are people going to find? They're going to find one article written by you in 2016 and you're like, well, that didn't work. Nobody really watched it. Nobody really read it. Nobody really engaged with it. Well, that's because you did one. That's not how it works. You don't do one, you do a thousand. By the time you've done a thousand, if people find one of them, then hopefully they're going to consume the other 999. By then, they're going to know you pretty well. They're going to have a lot of information and context about what you're expert in. And hopefully, if you're doing content right, they're going to have an idea about your personality. 
And these are the things that are going to nudge them up the ladder of trust and likability and all those things in know and liked and trusted that allow people to make decisions to hire you as their lawyer or hire me as their marketing agency or whatever it is they are going to do that's you are trying to encourage them to do through the provision of this content. Bear in mind, this is not only, I know this sounds cynical, but this is the truth. This is not only an altruistic thing where we give away information out of the kindness of our hearts. Many of us enjoy it. I enjoy it. I like sharing knowledge. However, I'm doing it with a purpose. I am doing it so that people will know, like, and trust me. And I am doing it so that people will ultimately have an opportunity to reach out to me and say, hey, Chris, I wonder whether you might be interested in working together. And I might say, yes, absolutely. I might say, Haha, no, you're way out of, my, out of my reach and I cannot possibly help you with what you're doing. Whatever the case may be, we're looking for that opportunity. That is why we're producing content. And I'm sure it's why you're looking at producing content if you don't already. So I encourage you to keep going and look for that binge effect because you do hit that point. You do hit that critical mass of content where you just have a few key pieces of content that people seem to find and share and really enjoy. And those pieces of content are the gateways to the rest of your material. And the rest of your material is the body of work that says this person is an expert in their field. So do not give up on a single piece of content or five or 10 or 20. Keep going and look for that binge effect because that's what's going to tip the needle in your favor. That is what's going to help people make a good decision. And that is what's going to help in this video, which I'm doing now. So I'll see you next time.